Hey everyone, welcome back. Now today, we gotta get something set up. Not for something that's happening today, but something that's coming next week. We pulled the plug, me and some dear friends, we pulled the plug and we got some new isopods coming. Well, at least, not really new isopods. We have some isopods here already that we're gonna be setting up. Uh, we've had some isopods that have gone for a long time, but my particular culture of this isopod has not really, really thrived. So, I had a friend that said they wanted to get some of those. I wasn't able to supply, but I knew a guy that could. So I reached out to him, gave us a great price. We're bringing in a bunch of those. We're gonna split them half and half, and we got something else super cool. But you guys are gonna have to wait for that video before I'm gonna show you what the cool thing is that's coming in as well. But today, I like to always, as I've told you before, always like to go and get my culture set up well in advance so they can kind of uh, somewhat establish it biologically and naturally. So today, I'm actually doing that. But in doing so, I've also got some of the other isopods that were in some of the old bins that haven't moved over yet. And one of them in particular, we're gonna move over today. So let's get to it. <laughs> So you guys have seen the bins that we use. So there's the one side of bin there. We still have, I believe, six more of those that are ready for use. They're just tucked in behind. But for the species that we're gonna be talking about today, we're gonna to be using some of my bigger bins. Now in the bigger bins, I had six total. They were very expensive. I believe I've shared the link with some people I've asked before, but uh, I, I've only ever used three. Now you see the Hoffman Sagri at the bottom and Marmadilidium gestroy in the middle. The top one is actually my Magnificus, my Priscillium Magnificus, and my colony may have crashed. Now the one thing that's a little bit different for me, the thing that I deal with that probably most people don't is, and it's something I never honestly really contemplated is, my basement, my floors are heated. So I don't have a furnace with forced air. There's no vents of any kind in my house. There's no air movement to the same degree in the same way. It's all by thermal. So basically, that spot on the ground is the warmest spot, and everything radiates up. And what happened when I was away for a week and a half for work is one of the cultures almost dried out. Now, you know as well as I do, a lot of the Spanish persilios, they like it a fair bit drier, depending on the species where it comes from. Hoffman Sagai can take a lot of variability. Magnificus cannot, Hassii cannot, uh, Ornatus cannot. They prefer it a lot drier. While a lot drier and almost bone dry are pretty much baby steps away from each other, and I think that's what happened in my culture crashed. Now the problem being with Magnificus is it's also somewhat a, a seasonal spawner. It only spawns usually one time a year versus Hoffman Sega. It'll spawn almost all year round. So I may have very well lost my culture. But as you can tell, you can still see the moisture and stuff. I, I still treat it for at least for probably six months as if they're still in there. They may be hiding. There may be some mankai in the substrate and stuff like that. So I treat it like no, nothing's lost. So, but one of the species in question today is one of the ones that's in these bins that we've been wanting to move for a while. Now, let's take a peek. Are you done making all that noise? I'm trying to film a video here. Now I know I could go over and just push your little green button. That's right, I pointed at you. You know, you behave. So the, the bins in question are these three bins. These are some of my older tubs. Do they work? They definitely work. Uh, the vents on these ones we've talked about before. These ones here, the holes were far too big for a lot of the isopods and stuff. Now this particular bin, one of the species in here, is again, one of those species that I thought completely died off. But I was just in here today, doing my maintenance, and I found one. Life uh, finds a way. And there he is right there. One of my lemon blues. Now this lemon blue decidedly looks more like a Kubaris Jupiter. However, I have never owned Kubaris Jupiter. <laughs> So, we don't really know, but we have one guy that's still left in here, and we have some springtails, and then we have a rogue guy over here, and that's going to be one of the ones we're going to be talking about today. Again, life finds a way, so we're going to leave them alone, and we're going to take a peek at the next. Now, this one is truly deserving of the much larger bin. This is one that I wanted to put into the larger bin right from the get-go, but it's a species that some people have tried and they've grown it the same way as they've done traditional Spanish, large Spanish species. And some people, the, the cultures have done okay and then they tend to somewhat kind of language after a while. And uh, I tried to do something a little bit different. You guys know me, I like to experiment a lot. And these ones here, I'm keeping them a lot more moist. Moist. This species, since we have done this, 
has really, really thrived. If you see all the juveniles there, I was just in here. It's what kind of gave me the idea of kind of doing a video for you guys. So a lot of the guys may have scattered, but you can see we have of many, many different generations. This is truly one of my absolute favorite isopod species. And it is of course, Porcilio bolivari. It's absolutely stunning in my opinion. Whether you like it or not, I think it's a fantastic land shrimp. If you're into isopods whatsoever, Porcilio bolivari should definitely be in your sights. So as always, I, I use my mix that I always generally have prepared. You can see it's almost my, my bins get a little bit empty. That's because we've set up a whole bunch of things as of late. It's the same type of mix that I use for all my vivariums and terrariums. It's got all those components. It's got lots and lots of that uh, decaying, rotting wood in it. It's an awesome, awesome component for, for vivariums as well for most of the isopods. We use it for the millipedes. We use it for everything. So we're going to be using that. The only thing that we will be adding, I'll show you shortly, is we have to add one component to this to make it suitable for the isopods. So what I do is I take my, uh, just a clean pail that I use in the fish room. I add uh, whatever amount of substrate I'm going to be needing. And then that one crucial important is, is in the addition of a good calcium source. As you guys know, I've used many different calcium sources. We've used eggshells, and you can use calcium calcium powders that you use for reptiles and stuff. But this calcium calcium carbonate is a, a substrate sold for reptile in the reptile industry. It's just a pure calcium source. And I just add a, a good amount to it that it's least as noticeable. And this way, it's I know that I have calcium available throughout the entire substrate. So that's ready to go. So the bin is pretty much ready to go. All I've done is just dampen the surface using my reverse osmosis from the noisy machine over there. So we're going to be transferring over most of the components of this mixture, including the mosses and barks and stuff and all the leaf litter, because this was relatively newly set up. But now we want to transfer them to the proper bin so they can truly thrive and multiply in an area that's, you know, just substantially larger. Now the ventilation for these bins, as you've seen before, is I have cross ventilation on both sides. So there's two here and there's two vents on this other side here. So we can transfer over the existing bark pieces. I transfer them over just uh, on one side of the enclosure as it is right now, just to minimize shock or transfer shock, because I want to go and take all this moss and lichen and so forth and gently apply it to the one side of the environment. Now, if this were a brand new enclosure, which we I mentioned, we've set up a couple other brand new enclosures, which is really what started the process of this today. And in doing that, one thing I was setting up is, I often do it, it's kind of a trick that I've done for years, but it just comes from my background, primarily in aquatics and the science behind it, is I will go and do a water change on some of my aquariums and I will use that water that I take from the aquarium, as long as it doesn't have too, too much detritus, and I will use that as kind of a method of inoculating the biologicals within a system. Now, it depends on what type of uh, aquarium you're running. Now, if you're running an aquarium that has a filter with a hang on the back and all the filter media is completely submerged in water, it'll work a little bit, but it's not really the same type of bacteria that we're trying to colonize. What I use is I use the bacteria that uh, out of my filters that where the filter medias are actually above water and then those units, uh, the bacteria that colonize is slightly different and it tolerates a different environment because it's not completely submerged under underwater all the time. This particular species is not, for at least in my experience, has not been much of a burrower. They tend to always be located under the bark pieces near the surface. And I did not find any more within my mix but I am going to go and take this down to the desk and go over it with a pretty fine tooth comb. Make sure I don't find any. And if I find a couple, they'll be transferred over. If I don't, ethically what I do with this substrate afterwards is I go and throw it in a, in a, a big bag, a big clear bag or something like that, something that, that, that is sealed. And then I go and throw it in my freezer. And that way I know that no matter what I use this for, a vivarium, a house plant, or if it just goes outside in the garden, I'm not transferring some uh, a species of isopod or being the one that's introducing it to the wild. These guys are at home. 
And as long as the environment is set up the same way and you see I've transferred most of their components over, there'll be no hiccups whatsoever to uh, them establishing in this new environment. And honestly, setting them up, going from, from the smaller tub to the big tub, because they were recently set up, you saw how absolutely easy it was. When you're using good quality substrates, healthy substrates, natural substrates, and you've got all the components of everything that they need, easy, easy. Only last thing I had to do was put the label on the bin. These guys are good to go with all the others. So as always, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave me some things in the, in the, in the, in the comment section. I always try to do my best to get back to you. Till next time, my friends, take care. Cheers.